Well, good evening, everyone. We want to thank you to our local development council meeting. As you know, we meet on the third week of, of every month on Wednesdays. This is the 15th, so we will be uh, having some discussion tonight. We will uh, have a vote on uh, on the grant selection committee uh, and the awards tonight. So what we're going to do uh, first off is we will go ahead and move with the other other committees, uh, just a, a general report from the other committees, and, and I will ask Kim if she does not mind that we hold her until last and we'll get into uh, the selection process or the, the uh, recommendations for the selection process. Uh, do we have anything from the oversight committee this evening? Grant oversight committee? Yes, yes, ma'am. Oh, good after, Good evening, everyone. No, we don't. Waiting on Kim. Okay, uh, public relations? No updates this month for public relations committee. We will get working after the grants yeah. process. Yeah, okay. And then, of course, the uh, new selection committee, Kevin, says he would be late. I, I don't think that they, they have anything to report at this point. Uh, we will continue to work on that and be ready for uh, the round for next year. And then, of course, we have a legislative branch. Uh, and uh, Senator Patterson, uh, I don't see... Uh, um, um, I don't see the other two uh, legislators, but since Patterson, you have anything that you? No, no report. <laughs> okay. Well, what we're going to do for those of you who have joined us, uh, uh, we have had a, a rather robust time in in the selection process. This has been the largest number of people <clears throat> to to uh, submit the grants at forty six. Uh, of course, we only had eight hundred fifty thousand dollars and. And the selection committee, I just want to stop for a second to say to the selection committee and those of you who work uh, tirelessly on this uh, on this process to thank you very much for the work that you have done, uh, especially you, Kimberly, and leading this thing and getting it off the ground and and taking us to a level that we have not experienced since the existence of the Local Development Council. Uh, uh, last year, we had only uh, 13 people to make it out of everybody that uh, submitted this year, we had uh, 46 total, I believe it was 46 total uh, submissions and our selection committee had to work through that process and they have done a fantastic job. And I'm gonna get out of the way and allow Ms. Hall to do her presentation after that. What we will do is um, uh, you know, we'll listen to the recommendations from the uh, selection committee and then we will take a vote as to how we will move from there. Thank you, Pastor Robinson, and thank you for um, for shouting out the committee. I would start with that as well. Um, to Keisha, Dr. Lattimore, um, um, Rashida, and Mary, um, just thank you for stepping in, especially you, Rashida, new to the to the team, jumping right in. Um, that was. Um, like like uh, Pastor Robinson said, we actually got 48. It was 46 to start, but there were two other applicants that would later be cleared um, and applications sent through. So it was 48 applications, um, more than we've ever had before. So that, that was good news, but it also posed its own set of challenges just in terms of us um, strategizing the best way to review those applicants. So I'll share with you... Um, the process we followed, the demographics of applicants that were received and the recommendations that we're putting forth before the, the LDC this evening. So there were 48 applicants. Uh, the committee is recommending 39 grant awards, which is the most we've ever had. Um, of the awards we're, we're recommending, 64% of them are new applicants that have not been awarded LDC funding before. So we're, we were excited about that. Um, we were, thank you to Kanika uh, for providing a lot of past information around funding and to Keisha and Toy or Dr. Lattimore, um, your uh, perspective from an oversight committee perspective that was very helpful in this process as well um, in understanding for some of these grantees that have repeat awards, how are they doing from a reporting um, um, just health and, and sort of wellness perspective as it relates to um, the operational aspect of, of the, um, the programs. 
Um, but taking a step back, what we each did was we uh, divided up the applicant pool. We had a series of three meetings um, where each of us presented uh, the grant, the, the, the pool of grantees that we were reviewing anywhere from nine to 12 per person. We gave a um, clear overview of what the, uh, what the applicant, what the service was that they were providing. Um, we talked about sustainability. Um, we talked about the radius. And um, we also talked about uh, just likelihood of effectiveness of the program, given the, the manner in which they, they sort of wrote the, the proposal up. Um, we were all we all had access to the applicant pool. If there were instances where we felt like, uh, I'm thinking this way, why don't you guys take a look at it and see what you think and 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 you know kind of come back and let me know if you agree. You know, we did that where we needed to. Um, but um, it was just a much, much more effective process with the divide and conquer. The uh, 39 applicants cover the spectrum from mentoring programs, crisis emergency response, food pantry, education and training, economic development, housing services, environmental education, community development, health and mental health services, youth and recreational services, the arts, humanities, um, and uh, childhood services as well. So a, a definitely a, a broad range of um, not just applicants, but also the service that they provide. We, uh, from a money perspective, we got requests well over $2 million. This year we had 850,000 to give. Um, so we had tight numbers to work with when you look at what was being asked. And some of these programs were really innovative and different. Um, so our recommendation does include all 850,000 of those dollars in order for us to spread it around. Um, you know, we were, we did just that. We determined um, kind of pieces and chunks to, to give to folks so that we were um, able to award more grantees with the hopes that they, um, you know, are able to execute their program, can show us um, from an oversight perspective, sustainability and whatnot, and, you know, can perhaps continue to come back. Maybe we can fund more if we have, you know, more money available, et cetera. But um, all in all, 39 applicants that we're um, proposing to award out of 48, and the full 850,000 um, is recommended for, um, those grantees across those uh, category types. Okay, Kimberly, we, we, we discussed just a little bit online, offline, how we were going to go about doing this. We've got what you said, 38? 39. 39, we've got 39 to get through and, and uh, maybe a brief overview of each one of these and why you recommended them. Um, <clears throat> and if anybody has any questions after that, we can entertain it then uh, and move from there to some discussion and ultimately a, a vote. But if you would like to uh, start from the top and, and head down, um, <clears throat> just a, a brief overview of why you guys uh, made the selection and then we can kind of go from there. Okay, so the first one is CASA. Um, this, and so what I'll do is provide literally like one, two sentences for what, what uh, a particular applicant provides. Um, and it is immigrant work to uh, e prevent evictions. Um, and, and again, all of these are South County within the six mile radius of the pool of folks that they're looking at. So this is one that was housing, um, housing in a, a crisis emergency response. Um, and this was to do uh, eviction prevention work. Catholic Charities provides food packages to 150 families in the Temple Hills area. Okay, so, just before you do that, uh, they requested, you want just speak oh, of the requested amount and, and the awarded amount as well. Oh, okay. Um, CASA requested 50,000, we are awarding them 35,000. And that's the one with the immigrant work to prevent evictions and um, the housing crisis response. Catholic Charities requested 24,000. Um, the recommended award is 20,000. They provide food, 
food packages or food pantry for 150 families in the Temple Hills area. The Center for Nonprofit Advancement requested 50,000. Uh, the recommended award is 30,000 um, and it provides education and training and leadership development um, to uh, 12 nonprofits and 24 people. Those three that I've read, read so far have never been awarded um, uh, thus far, at least from, from the records that I saw. The Center for Supportive Schools requested 50,000. Our award is 15. Um, they are a repeat um, uh, applicant, but uh, they do provide peer mentoring services um, targeted at keeping ninth graders in school. Uh, they target Oxon Hill and Friendly High School. Uh, the Centro de Apoyo Familia, um, I say that with a, uh, an asterisk and, and um, asking for forgiveness if I pronounced that wrong. They asked for 50,000. Uh, we are uh, re recommending 25. Uh, they do a lot of English as a second language, um, work with that community, home buyer workshops, expanding um, some of what already exists uh, around um, economic development in that community. Um, also, someone we have not given to before, Chris in April asked for 50, we're recommending 20K, um, and this is providing housing services. Akakik Foundation uh, is asked, asked for 88,825, 8, we uh, recommend it, 8,825. It is for education um, for school children in the field of environmental science. Capital Area Food Bank is a food pantry. Um, they had they laid out the demographic area that they would serve. Fifty thousand was the ask. Fifteen thousand was the recommended award. Coalition for African Americans in Performing Arts asked for fifty. The recommended award is twenty. It is in the field of education uh, with black classical musicians, live performances, virtual presentations for children in the area. Um, can I um, ask a quick question? Yes. Um, the organization before um, Akaki Foundation, what was that one? Children, I'm sorry, Christmas in April. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, the communities to together. Um, this is one that they asked for 50,000. We said 10. This is an area where they wanted to provide some um, assistance to um, seniors and housing around technology development um, and um, workshopping. The Community advocates for family and youth asked for 49,000. We suggested, or we recommend 20. They provide a community education form, mental health services, financial security, um, outreach, and increasing awareness of crime prevention um, in the community, looking at a population of folks age 25 and above. The community builders asked for 50. Our recommendation is 20. Uh, they wanna provide a free six to eight week summer program targeting um, scholars, focusing on helping students develop a love for reading and a core necessity for literacy and learning. Community development, outreach and um, uh, outreach and development, they asked for 46. We're, we're suggesting 25 uh, in the area of economic development. It's a homeless prevention um, group. Uh, Easter Seals is another one that asked for 50. Um, the recommendation from us was 30. Uh, they also deal with homelessness and families with disabilities and language barriers. Gateway Boarding Academy, um, another, I'm not saying when things are new consistently, but this was another new one. They asked for 50, our recommendation is 30. It's an all board, boys school. Uh, this is a program to provide after school structural and programming um, assistance. Habitat for Humanity, Metro Maryland. Um, 
I, I think we're all familiar with Habitat for Amenity, but they, um, as housing services, they have earmarked a certain number of communities within the radius um, to provide home fixer up uh, services to. Hillside Children's Center asked for 50. The award is 25 um, recommendation. Uh, this is to recruit students in the ninth grade with the goal of um, staying in the program through graduation. So they have a methodology to track the kids and um, stay in contact with them, um, do mentoring for fathers as well um, on the home front. Hope Connections for Cancer Support. This is in partnership with St. Paul's Church. They asked for 50. Um, my recommendation is 12 to give them. Um, it is a faith-based program where uh, they're gonna provide psychological cancer education and support services within mental health and physical health within that uh, radius. Housing Options and Planning Enterprises asked for 50. The recommendation is 25. Program is going to provide property owners in Forest Heights with um, uh, improvements to housing, to their housing um, um, communities. Kappa Epsilon Lambda Education Foundation asked for 24. The recommendation is 12. This program will focus on healthy relationships, teen pregnancy prevention, college recruitment access, kind of an overall mentoring and tutoring services program. Kindness for Kidney International uh, asked for 36514. The recommendation is 36514. It is a five week interactive program to support kidney warriors, patients, and their families navigating through dialysis. So, this is health and mental health. Let's go up to the 21st century high school. This is high. This was one that um, is also new. Uh, they asked for 50. The award recommendation is 25. It's actually introducing high school students. Sorry, my dog is going crazy. It's actually introducing high school students to um, aviation. Uh, so this was one that we hadn't seen before and, and certainly thought uh, was uh, innovative and different. Oxon Hill Boys and Girls Club asked for 17,500. The recommendation is that, and it is for gym floor replacement in their gymnasium. Um, sorry, I'm hopping around on my list a bit. People for Change Coalition. People for Change Coalition um, is, yes. Um, ask for 50, the recommendation is 20. They are partnering with Tanger Outlets to offer community events, entertainment, free education workshops uh, geared towards South County residents. The um, Prince George's County Arts and Humanities Council asked for 50, the recommendation is 20. And it's um, this Art Nations program dedicated to supporting local artists. And they actually will have um, um, exhibits where artists don't have to pay, but they can bring their merchandise and people can purchase it and the artists would keep the money. But it, anyway, it promotes art in the community and gives them a forum to be able to, um, to share art and then also teach classes and whatnot for residents. The uh, Prince George's Child Resource Center is asking for 50. Our recommendation was 20. And um, it is child care training and technical assistance that they're going to provide workshop curriculum and also employment placement. Um, for people who want to, uh, who, who are in that program, job placement. Uh, the Prince George's Community College asked for 37.5. The recommendation is 30. And it is uh, education training for adults and young adults. The Prince George's County Fire EMS Foundation asked for 50. The recommendation is 20. And it's really a risk reduction and prevention service. There are a number of fires that they outline that have taken place at the harbor and, and other places that could have been prevented. So it's a prevention education program um, for the community. We model USA, it asks for 50, recommendation is 20. 
they uh, work are working to establish a global trusted network. And this has to do with human trafficking um, and bringing awareness through targeted information campaigns, um, workshops to empower women and girls through education and development. The Washington Area Community Investment Fund asked for 50, we're recommending 20. They're providing access to capital and advisory services to low and moderate income folks who want to learn how to start a business and actually have businesses to start. So this was economic development. PTA of Valley View asked for 2000. The award recommendation is 2000 and it's an incentive program for parental and educational volunteerism. Tis to inspire strong African, uh, um, strong African children fund. Um, this is a, they, hold on, they asked for 50, the recommendation is 25. These are caseworkers to work with um, 30 residents around mental health and other services um, as it relates to African students transitioning into um, the community. Uh, review and Revitalize Marriage and Family Institute asked for 50. Um, the award recommendation is 35K. Uh, it's a mental health and wellness program to address um, mental health counseling to youth and young adults. Soldiers Ministries asked for 50. The recommendation is 35K. It's, a kit, it's about a food pantry, feeding children, providing uniforms to children, um, and they've earmarked school, particular schools for that. St. John's Episcopal Church asked for 10,000. The recommendation is 10,000. It's a food pantry, pantry grant um, to replace a freezer and refrigerator, and any money left over would be to buy food for the pantry to give out to the community. Um, Why Not Inc. is asked for 11,080. The award recommendation is 11,080. And it is an entering program targeted at, uh, at risk youth uh, to develop um, destructive behavior, um, youth that have destructive behavior and preventive things around them with a lack of support. The Denny House asked for 50. The award recommendation is 25. Um, this is long-term transitional housing program, um, targeted youth age 18 to 24, with a focus on the LGBTQ community, um, and homelessness, and veterans. The Foundation for the Advancement of Maryland asked for 50. The award recommendation is 25. It is a summer math tutoring program at Oxon Hill Middle School. And they're also going to have a focus on music technology, instrumental music and vocal. Um, I, I believe I hit all of them um, at a high level giving you, um, and I hope you heard the um, kind of the vast, um, array of services being offered, which again, we thought was, was um, different in a good way um, or, or expansive from some of what we've seen before. Are there any questions from anyone? Uh, be, be, before you entertain the questions, um, what we had was a, a request for uh, a million nine hundred seven thousand four hundred forty seven dollars Of course, we only had 850000 to uh to work with. We expect that now that COVID has, well, not necessarily slowed down. I mean, it's clear that the casino is, is uh, after that money. So they have opened things back up. And, and uh, so we would expect this time next year that we would receive uh, a larger sum, sum of money. And then, of course, with the expansion of a three-mile radius, uh, we will probably have this kind of application process again next year. But before you entertain questions, just a, a, a quick cap, um, Kimberly, on, on, the, on the point system in the process. You don't have to get into a lot of detail, but um, you meant you meant you had three meetings and you divided everything up and had three meetings. And then we get into a points, uh, a scoring system that I think people need to understand as to how we uh actually came up with this or just a brief you don't need to get into a lot of detail but there's a scoring process 
uh, which we have used uh, since the existence of uh, BLDC. Sure. We need to know. Sure. So at a high level, uh, the committee looks at the statement of, a pro of the problem. What is it that this applicant is trying to solve? So we want to ensure that that the um, the project, the, the statement of the problem is clearly defined, the project that they are going to implement to attack or address this problem is clearly defined, um, how it's going to be implemented, um, how will the applicant meet the goals of, um, of the project. So if you set out to do X, you've got to show us how you're going to achieve X. Um, they've got to be measurable, smart goals. So they've got to be specific, measurable, achievable. S M A R. Um, what's the R? Help me out, committee. Um, realistic and time bound. So um, they've got to be all those things. So we're looking at those things for scoring. Sustainability is big. So you come to the LDC, you ask for this funding. How do we know that? So we give you the funding. You know, are you going to constantly need the funding? Is there something in place? How, how are you measuring success of the program? How do you know you're doing what you said you set out to do? So it is a pretty robust um, kind of scoring model or, that we use. And as Pastor Robinson said, it's, it's been consistently used. Um, uh, and, and, you know, until the application changes, the, the scoring aligns to the application. So that's why it's very important that um, when you're writing these grants, and this is something we say in the workshops, um, be, be very specific to, to answer the questions, to state very clearly what it is you're doing, how you're going to measure it, how it's sustainable, because um, we're, we, use, we use the same point system for all of that. Okay, thank you. Now we'll entertain, uh, I think someone had a question. Any comments? Uh, Delegate Turner. Uh, good evening. I, I'm, I'm sorry that I got on late and I wanted to say hello to everybody. That's number one. Um, number two, I am at my office, so I'm, I'm on the phone and not on my computer. Um, uh, can I just ask uh, Kimberly a question? Well, first of all, I like how she ran that down and I was trying to follow. So how many, did, first of all, did she said did we have, what was the number again that so we gave? We, we received 48 applicants and we're, uh -huh. and we are recommending 39 be awarded. 30, okay, award. Yeah. Okay, and then uh, one more, um, I, I didn't hear it. Did you say, uh, gateway uh, uh, applied. Could you tell me what what gateway? Um, did you see some some say gateway? Let me chat. It's Gateway Boarding Academy. Oh, the board. All boys school. Yes. Thank you. Okay. I was trying to find them. Did you want to know the amount? How much, yeah. How much did they ask for, and how much did y'all amount uh, approve awarded? You see it, Rashida? I'm looking at my spreadsheet. Where yes, is it? I, um, we awarded 30,000. Um, I don't have the column for what they, they asked. Request, I'm assuming 50. Okay. They, 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 yeah. asked, they asked for 50,000. And uh, oh, oh, we and got 30. 30. Oh, I see it. Yep, that's right. And the other thing, I'm not sure if you heard this, um, Delegate Turner, but just uh -huh. for your information, 64% of of what we're recommending to award our new grantees that have never received Ooh, any money. that is wonderful new you know what i'm so happy about that i i think you did a fan well your team did a fantastic job and i am I'm, I'm i'm just uh so happy about that we had new people because i was a little bit concerned about the same people being awarded all the time. So I, I, again, I want to thank you for doing such a good job. Second is that we will get a copy. Uh, how soon will we get uh, our LDC, the members, get a copy of this? <coughs> 
I have that Pastor Robinson, but I'm not sure. I know that <clears throat> Kanika does it and Ryan do like a formal letter with everything on it. And that has the the list of the applicants and the the dollar amounts. Um, Ryan, do you know how fast you guys are turning that around? Uh, as soon as you uh, get us the list, uh, we'll be able to get that. Uh, I would assume in a couple of days, we'll be able to get that, get that all together. Is that okay, uh, Delegate Turner? Yes, and thank you so much. Thank you very much. That, that's all the quick. Well, I, you know, she went through the list so fast, so that's why I would like to see it in yep. writing so I can uh, absorb who did what and who, who we awarded, and we doing a great job in this LDC. I'm proud. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely, we'll get you that. <clears throat> and thank you. Carrie. Carrie. Um, yeah, I have a quick question. Is there any way to um, get a breakdown, like what district, like dist how many District 5 got or District 4 within the radius? Uh, I don't I don't know if we 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 have I mean as long as they're inside of the radius I don't know if it's broke I don't know if we or, or if we did break it out that way we weren't really as interested in in districts as we were interested in it uh, staying inside of the uh, six mile radius um, okay. I guess that could could be possible I don't you know we'll have to look at that to see if we can provide you that uh, but uh, I mean that the 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 selection process was not based on what district you in. Right. Well, I mean, I, I may be able to figure that out once the list. Yeah. Comes, so. yeah. Thank you. Uh, uh, Dr. Lattimore. Um, yes. Yeah, so I wanted to say kudos to our team. Yes. I think that we did. Um, I think it ran smoother this year and Takesha can chime in than it did last year. Um, and we have more applicants. Um, a lot of, you know, you, you get on me and because we're so hard, but I just want to let you know, pastor, that I took money away from almost all of my applicants so we could spread it around and spread the love. I think the cat's out the bag. We're going to need some more money next year. So, um, because a lot of people, um, apparently, like you said, they know about this, but I will just point out one, um, Kimberly, the driving school. Um, what was the name of that one again? The, the Academy. It was one that did the driving school last year where they were teaching young people to drive. Mm -hmm. um, but it didn't seem like they gave an excuse. They were teaching them to drive so that they don't um, commit carjackings and things of that nature. And so the, the, the reason that they gave um, to do this driving school just did not go well with me because, you know, you're teaching them to learn to carjack people. I mean, it was just all over the place. And we gave them money year before last. And they kind of had the same rhetoric. And as soon as I saw the word carjack, and I'm just like, wait, we're teaching them to drive so that, you know, they won't carjack people or something. It was just the, the way the application was worded. Um, it's a driving school where they teach them to drive, I think, next time. And I'm going to ask Kimberly if we can do this, that, you know, they may want to revise why they would like the money and leave things out like, you know, to alleviate carjackings and things of that nature. But I don't think we gave them any money this year. I don't the tr I don't no, know if it was the training source. No, they didn't receive any money this year. Okay, but it was one of them. It's a driving school, and it's somewhere in Oxon Hill. And to answer, try to answer the question of um, Miss Mack, most of the, the districts, you know, most of them were predominantly in Fort Washington, Akakeek, Clinton, and um, Oxon Hill area. They were all Ward 8. So I don't know how you could break the districts out, but um, I'll leave that to Kimberly. I just did in I my head. I, when you said it, I just did in my head because Clinton is district okay. five. Um, I think Clinton uh, is in nine. Yeah, nine. Well, nine you're oh, right. Some of some of Clinton is in nine. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, I just broke it down in my head. I I did have a question though. Would would the applicants who 
weren't awarded um, a, a grant, they get an opportunity to get a debrief or you know, get, a, get some points of where they may have failed um, in their application and, and where they can do better? Well, I'll defer that question to Kimberly because um, she knows the process you know, better than I do once we finish with um, scoring the grants. But I do want to say that Rashida helped out a lot. Takesha, Kim, and I, we were a great team. I really appreciated it. And I did all my applications first, didn't I, Kim? You sure did. <laughs> OK. Go ahead. And so I defer, I'll Show defer off. to Kim. <laughs> So, uh, and I think it was easier um, because you all were, you know, you were you were veterans. But to answer your question, um, Ryan, do you do any debrief or, to the folks that did not get awarded? I didn't think so because you'd probably need our feedback to do so. We usually make that uh, available to people. It, it, um, usually, that happens during the OMB portion of the process. Um, in the past, we uh, we we noted that if, if someone wants to a little bit more information about like why they didn't get fully funded or funded at all, uh, we've offered that uh, explanation uh, from the LDC. But I don't think it's ever really been taken up by any of the organizations. Okay, and if you offer that this time, that would be great. I'm okay. willing to do that if people. Would like okay, to. we can we can include that in the correspondence to uh, people who may not have. Uh, All right, um, Senator Patterson, and then to Keisha. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, and good evening to everyone. Listen, I am just so excited about the outcome of this this evaluation. I just want to thank the the committee. This uh, an outstanding piece of work. Um, we got a good increase of, of uh, participants. And we also uh, increased the, the overall categories of which was funded. So we, we've, we've come a long ways. And uh, I, I know it's because of the hard work of this committee. It takes a lot of time. Don't think you yes. can run it and do this overnight or one weekend. This is a lot of work that has been put into uh, getting these applications ready and awards. Uh, to present to us this evening. So thank you, committee. Outstanding, outstanding. Wonderful job. Wonderful job. Thank you very much. It indeed takes a lot of work. I was on the first, was on the first selection committee and I quit after that. I, you, you quit with me. I, I mean, it ran me off. I, 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 I deserve one year. <laughs> I, I, that's all I serve is one year. I didn't want to do it anymore. After that, you know? so, um, it, is, it is indeed a process to know what they went through in order to come to this and to have as many um, applications that they had. I mean, 13, we had 13 last year. And, and before that, I can't remember how many we had, but it was a hard process. Yeah. So I quit after that. I, I, I said, okay, <laughs> uh, this is just too much for me. And hey, Mr. But, General, I, know, I don't know what kind of awards the county might have, but certainly we ought to think about some way to recognize the hard work of this group. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, yes. We're uh, talking. Yeah, uh, we're talking. <laughs> to, to Keisha. So thank you. I, I do want to say, again, thank you. Proud to serve with all of the ladies who serve on this committee. And thank you, Kimberly, for representing um, the, the hard work, the effort um, that we all put in. Thank you. I, did, I just wanted to say that I think that as we uh, reviewed applications this year, and I'm saying this in part because Kevin has joined the call, is we did see a, a few, we saw a number of applicants that are directly serving and looking to serve Spanish speaking populations, Latinx populations. And so as we do the needs assessment, and even as we look to sort of the vetting process for our grants next year, it would be really interesting and really great if we could understand what the demographic makeup of that area is and make sure that we are getting applicants that are really providing inclusive services um, within that particular area. So just sort of thinking about it from the standpoint, because a lot of the applicants that we got this year, while their grant application may fit into housing or something like that, they are really trying to serve a underserved population within an underserved population. So making sure that we continue to account for that as we go forward. Well, well, of course, that will fall on the selection committee and Mr. Kevin uh, Harris. Of course, we, you know, what we have experienced in the past is, is grants kind of telling us what they want to do in the community. 
which is why it's important to have a needs assessment uh, of the community so that we can kind of dictate what we want to see in the community rather than somebody just looking for money and find it down here in South County and want to apply and think that's it. So that's that's the whole idea of the needs assessment committee. I think we'll be up and running and, and in full force by this time next year. Of course, we just established that. So so as a result of that, uh, we, we, we were still at the mercy of, of, of grantees kind of telling us what they wanted to do in the community. And what we had to do is comb through that based upon what we know uh, the needs are here. And, and I think we'll have a better opportunity at that this time next year. And uh, uh, Co-Chair Navies. Oh, good evening, everyone. I just really want to applaud Kimberly and her leadership yes. process. She literally made this easy. Yes, it was 48 applicants that we had to review, but it was because of the systems that she had in place that made this easy for us to be able to execute. Also want to thank uh, Delegate um, Turner for expanding the, um, the, the area, the impact area, because that allowed us to be able to get more grants to come in. And for me, it was really interesting to see how many of these grants that were coming in that had a direct impact coming out of COVID. I mean, there were so many, when we think about mental health, when we think about lack of housing, those kind of grants for me was very impactful because I see it every day and it directly impacts what we all kind of experience coming out of COVID. So I truly applaud Kimberly and the entire team. Thanks, ma'am. Um, Rashida? Okay, just wanted to echo everything that everyone else on the committee has said. I just want to add, thank you, Kimberly, for bringing me along. I asked a lot of questions. I mean, Kimberly had everything organized, structured, was responsive. Um, I appreciate all the ladies for welcoming me to the committee. It was a lot of work. I'm not sure I'm going to quit just yet, but, <laughs> but it was a lot of work. <laughs> I really do appreciate you, Kimberly, your leadership for now. Yeah, well, that sounds like a vote to extend Kimberly's um, 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 time on the LDC. I'm, I will see if I can move to get that done and make a motion this time next month. Hey, hey man. Um, Second. So, so, so with that in mind, um, uh, Senator Passon, you and uh, uh, Coach and Navy still have your hands up? You have something else you want? No, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm yeah. off that. Thank you. Okay, well, with that in mind, what we will do is entertain a motion to vote uh, to accept the the uh, the recommendations of the selection committee as they stand uh, in a second, and then we'll have some discussion and 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 then take a vote after that. Mr. Chair, I move that the local development council um, submit the forty nine. Applicants for awards for uh, 2022 from the local development council. Now that was not 49, that was how many came I, I thought it was 49. 39. 39. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, do I have a second? I second. Okay, we, I, I believe uh, uh, Kevin uh, uh, caught you there, uh, Delegate Turner. Okay. You know, and, and by the way, you look good on your phone. You, we, we. <laughs> We don't, I mean, we can tell you still sitting high, you know, you <laughs> looking real good. So, so, so with that, that in mind, uh, the motion has been moved forward and second, any discussion before we, uh, before we call for a vote? No discussion? Uh, Rashida, did you raise your hand? No, just adjusting my glasses. Oh, okay. All right. Well, uh, we will go ahead and entertain the vote uh, to accept the recommendations of the selection committee as uh, they have been presented. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. Uh, we have a, a, a full vote. Uh, uh, the ayes have it. And uh, we want to again thank the selection committee for all that you have done in this process. You most certainly um, deserve a uh, a hand clap. Thank you so much, Kimberly, for all that you've been doing uh, with this process. So with that said, uh, if we don't have anything else, we will uh, entertain a motion from uh, for, well, Ryan, let me ask you a question. Do we have, uh, when is our break? Sure. 
usually August. 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 So we've got one more meeting uh, before before we take take the break. Uh, so we will go ahead and allow uh, uh, Senator Patterson and Delegate Turner to uh, uh, move and second. You know, for almost you know until next month. Praise God. Amen. I second. All right. Uh, we have a second now. Meeting is adjourned. We want to thank you guys uh, for hanging out, Kimberly, in this selection committee. I can't say enough about you guys. Me, I really can. And Kimberly, you are you are Jew. When I thought you were, we were gonna lose you. Uh, when I took on, I was about to quit too. I just started the job. I was about to quit. Uh, so I, I just want to thank you so much for stabilizing things when all that stuff went down, where we lost everybody all at the same time. Uh, it was uh, it was uh, it was pretty devastating, and you you really don't have a clue how much you stabilized uh, this group. So I want to thank you for that, and I want to thank you for the selection committee and Rashid and everybody else that was involved in that process. Uh, uh, Sister Navies, all of you, Takesha and and Dr. Lattimore, thank you so much. We deeply appreciate that. So with that said, uh, our time is up, and we thank you for yours. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Kevin. Okay. Good night. Leave. Good Thanks, night. Ryan. Thanks, Ryan. Leave. Thank you, sir.